What was the atmosphere like there the last two nights? It was fun. It was electric. Uh, the first game, the fans were angry. I mean, there was a, an open hostility. And then when they got uh, down three zip and we had more inflatable trash cans than I'd ever seen in my life. And we had, usually when there's a home run, a ball is thrown back onto the field. There were foul balls that were thrown back onto the field. So the first game, it was a little bit dicey. Last night for a change, it was in fact the players and their bats that did most of the talking. So both of the nights were dramatic and theatrical. Last night in Hollywood, where they always strive for a happy ending, at long last there was. But also, I wonder if winning a World Series has diffused this just a little bit for Dodger fans. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. All right. All right. Just uh, wondering. It, it, but it was fascinating because one of the beauties of, of working at Dodger Stadium, it's a home field advantage. It's, you know, a visually spectacular ballpark. The sun sets, the San Gabriel Mountains are off in the distance, and you have 52,000 each of the first two nights. The first night, there was this air of trepidation. And after being shut out in the first game, last night, Max Scherzer shows up, have gun, will travel. He might have been paladin. And, and the way he came out and did his business, the Dodgers were in desperate need of a win. They were feeling awful about the previous night. Um, and then there was this sense of, okay, now it's the players' turn to uh, speak their vengeance. And they did so with their bats. And the crowd was a little, well, I can't say subdued, a little more gentlemanly uh, last night than uh, they were in the first night. But there were two terrific theatrical games between two terrific teams who, of course, met in the World Series in 17. So it was great, great theater. And, and, and Scherzer just turned in one of those performances so that you, if you ever needed reminding of how great this guy is and how he is able to withstand and even embrace the pressure of the moment, it was a it was a brilliant athletic theatrical production last night. How do you think history will treat the Astros? Not well. I think at the end of the day, they will always have that scarlet letter. Um, and, and in this town now, I don't know if it's 1 and 1A one or they're just tied for first between Altuve and uh, Carrasco. Um, the, the boos were genuine. They were visceral. Uh, the other guys, they were politely booed because they're the other team. But those two guys, they really got it. And, and, and last night when uh, Scherzer began the game by striking out Altuve, arch enemy number one out here, the place went crackers. Yeah. And that was the scene. That was the feel. That was the vibe throughout the night. So it was great, great theater. What are the Dodgers' issues right now? They have to figure out when Kershaw gets back. They have to solidify their bullpen some. You know, they, they still haven't gotten uh, Trey Turner to arrive as yet. But last night, for instance, Dan, Scherzer comes back after his spectacular performance. And it was, you know, it was hotel quality, as, as Kenny would say. Um, he comes back to the dugout and he is greeted by Clayton Kershaw, Mookie Betts, Albert Pujols. I mean, it was a star studded attraction greeting him. And in all the years I've been doing it, and I've been working with Rick Monday now for 17 years, we were talking about I had never seen a pitcher receive a curtain call. Usually, when he is finished, he goes into the dugout, gets his high fives, goes about his business. Last night, it was a curtain call, and he was pushed out by whoever. Oh, it just happened to be Clayton Kershaw. It was one of those magical moments. I swear, I don't ever remember a pitcher after a performance, after coming out of the game, then getting a curtain call. So it, it really was a magical, electric, charismatic moment last night. 